بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله وحده والصلاة والسلام على من لا نبيه بعد قال المؤلف رحمه الله تعالى الحمد لله الذي أرسل رسوله بالهدى ودين الحق ليظهره على الدين كله وكفى بالله شهيدا وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له إقرارا به وتوحيدا وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله صلى الله عليه وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم تسليما مزيدا أما بعد فهذا اعتقاد الفرقة الناجية المنصورة إلى قيام الساعة أهل السنة والجماعة وهو الإيمان بالله وملائكته وكتبه ورسله والبعث بعد الموت والإيمان بالقدر خيره وشره ومن الإيمان, ومن الإيمان بالله الإيمان بما وصف به نفسه في كتابه العزيز وبما وصفه به رسوله محمد, محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم من غير تحريف ولا تعطيل ومن غير تكييف ولا تمثيل بل يؤمنون بأن الله ليس كمثله شيء وهو السميع البصير فلا ينفون عنه ما وصف, ما وصف به نفسه ولا يحرفون الكلم عن مواضعه ولا يلحدون في أسماء الله وآياته ولا يكيفون ولا يمثلون صفاته بصفات خلقه لأنه سبحانه لا سمي له ولا كفء له ولا ند له أسبك. الحمد لله رب العالمين والعاقبة للمتقين ولا عدوان إلا على الظالمين وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له إقرارا به وتوحيدا وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله صلى الله عليه وسلم تسليما مزيدا أما بعد So to proceed where we were left off yesterday A few factors uh, are received Some phone calls and some text messages Regarding uh, yesterday's lesson there was some ambiguity whether it was going to be on or not. So there were some individuals that did not attend last night's lesson. So they missed last night's lesson. Also, the ones that did attend or the ones that were listening online, um, the dars, some of the ma'lumat, some of the information that was delivered uh, was not comprehended in a manner that was befitting. So this is, the, in a nutshell, I've been requested to go over the notes of yesterday's lesson. So inshallah, we'll, we'll do that quickly and then we will continue inshallah and take another little portion. So <clears throat> regarding yesterday, we started with Sheikh Ahmed and Najmi's explanation. And we reached the part where it mentions regarding the statement of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Wallahu yuhibbul muhsineen. That indeed, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he loves the good doers. And Shaykh Ahmad al-Najmi, he says, regarding tanzeeh, that Ahl sunnah wal jama'ah, they do free Allah of all imperfections. However, they do it in a manner which is in the correct aqidah. And the correct aqidah is, they do accordingly to the verse where they mentions there is nothing like unto Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala then after affirms two attributes of hearing and seeing. So due to that fact, Ahlul Sunnah wal Jama'ah, they do affirm the attributes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and they do free Allah of any imperfections, but in the correct manner. Not in the manner as the deviant sex, as Shaykh Ahmad al Najmi he mentioned yesterday and he gave the example of the Asha'ira. It, regarding this verse they will not affirm muhabba for allah because the verse it says wallahu yuhibbul muhsinin allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves the good doers so this loves is an attribute is an action of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that ahl sunnah wal jama'ah they affirm but the likes of the asha'ira they will negate this and they will interpret the muhabba to be something else so they say for example the Sheikh Ahmad he says so they explain it as yukrimuhum 
that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He honors and He favors them. Knowing that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has the attribute of muhabba, but they will distort its meaning. So then Shaykh was talking around about that particular thing. And he came then to the qa'ida and the principle. أن الاتفاق في الاسم الصفة لا يقتدي الاتفاق في حقيقتها Now, that is on page 51 on the top. This is where it started to get a bit complicated and this is a very important rule that we should understand and comprehend. The Asha'ira and other than them, what they say is that if you are going to affirm something for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala then they make that affirmation absolutely, uh, they make it absolute for all things. So for example, if they say Allah loves, then that means that attribute of loving, then that resembles a creation. So that action of loving, then it is the same for the whole of anything else. So due to that fact, they hold that now to be, Comparing to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Because a, a, a particular thing An action has a name And the ittifaq Meaning that it agrees in name The name agrees Allah loves and the creation loves So due to the fact that They come together With a name of loving For them that is a problem for them, they are now saying due to the fact that it resembles one name, so it means that the creation and Allah's loving is of the same and you're comparing. So then what do they fall into? They fall into negation. So yesterday's lesson regarding this principle is to show that what they are referring to, this principle which they are holding onto is batil. And what is that? What is this principle, what they are holding on to? No, I know it's false, but what we have just mentioned. Al-Ittifaq fil ism al sifa The agreeing of a name of an attribute. So the attribute that's in question here is Muhabba. Muhabba. So Muhabba translated is the attribute of loving. So when Allah affirms that he loves in the Quran, what comes to their mind is that human beings also love. And when human beings have that action, then they also refer that to as muhabba. So now this is a problem for them. They're now saying that the creation has muhabba and Allah also has muhabba. So now automatically they are saying that you are comparing. Because it ha- carries the same name. So now they are saying that this attribute of loving is the same. So Allah is high and above that. So we cannot say that Allah loves. So then they end up either rejecting or either they interpret it to be something else. They come with a different meaning. So now Shaykh Ahmed al-Najmi, rahimallah, when we mentioned yesterday, he refutes... This theory. So you have to understand what they say and then how to refute this theory. So before we can refute the theory, we have to understand what their theory is. Is, is, that, is, that, is that clear so far? Yeah. So what is their theory before we move on? What is their ishqal? What's their problem? Aywa? Muhabba. Bil ism, by way of name. So for them, they, that for them, what does that mean for them automatically? No, it means that first, resembling, it's the same. So then they say that Allah is above that, so then they negate it. Or they have to bring a ta'wil, an inter- interpretation of what that muhabba means. So now Sheikh Ahmed al-Najmi is going to refute that theory of theirs. Tamam? So he says, Mathalan. So is it clear? Because yesterday I thought I was clear, but then afterwards I found out I wasn't clear. Is it clear so far? No, no. In yesterday's lesson. 
No, no, we haven't. That, that hasn't come. What I've said is what we're talking about. Just that. Do you, what I mentioned, do you understand that? Khalas. So now we're going to tackle this shubha and this doubt which they've brought. So Shaykh, he said, So for example, if we say that Allah hayyun, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is living, والمخلوق يسمى حيًا أيضًا The creation, it is also referred to as living. So Allah refers to himself as حيٌ, Allah is living. And that ism, that name or that title is also given and explained to a living create, a living being. That a living being, he is حيٌ, he is alive. تمام؟ فهل اتفاق في اسم الحي مقتضى للاتفاق بحقيقة الحياة بين الخالق والمخلوق؟ So, Sheikh uh, Ahmadi says, رحم الله you, we've established that Allah is living. We've established that the creation is living. So we agree with that. With, and, it, and it's referred to as Hayyun. As Allah mentions in the Quran, Hayyun referring to himself, Hayyun regarding the creation. So the description is the same, the name, the title. But then Shaykh, he says, does this now mean, due to the fact that it is agreeable in description and name, does that now mean that the reality of the living of Allah is now the same as the reality of the creation? Is it the same? No. It's not the same. It's not, is that understood? So the first angle that we tackle it is just because the fact that that is referred to as Hayyun and meaning Allah and the creation is referred to Hayyun, Sahih. It does have the same wording. But in essence and reality is two different things. The living of Allah and the living of the creation is two different things. And Sheikh Ahmed al-Najmi, he goes and explains and he says a lot. Obviously it's not the same. Rubbuma, Allah alam. Rubbuma. But uh, the Ashaira they do affirm certain characteristics, but we'll get to that. I don't want to confuse everybody yet, but inshallah. So now the Shaykh, he says, and will explain how the living of Allah is different from the living of the creation, even though it's the same in name. إِذَنْ حَيَاتُ اللَّهِ عَزَّ وَجَلْ لَمْ يَسْبِقْهَا Adam. So regarding Allah's living, then... It is since eternity. Meaning that there is no beginning of Allah's living. There is no beginning. And it does not follow with an ending. So Allah's living, there is no beginning and there is no end. So that's the description regarding Allah's living. And also the living of Allah is not dependent on anything else. Is not in need of anything for Allah to be living. Is not in need. As for the creation, then the creation is preceded by a beginning. Mankind was preceded before man came about. Mankind was created. There was something before mankind. So it's preceded with a beginning. And also... Mankind will also, after it, it's not ever living, mankind will perish. Mankind will perish. So these are two examples that the shaykh has given. And then he brings proof. And the face of your Lord, full of um, uh, the, the majesty and, and full of honor, will abide forever. And... That is the end part. But in the beginning, whomsoever is on the earth will perish. Whomsoever is on the earth, Allah mentions, will perish. Except for the face of your Lord, the mighty and majestic, who will abide forever. This is a proof that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala what? Ever living. Ever living. Does not perish. Also Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he mentions, وَقَدْ خَلَقْتُكَ مِنْ قَبْلُ وَلَمْ تَكُنْ شَيْئًا Allah refers, certainly I created you, meaning mankind, before you was nothing. So what's that a proof of? 
that mankind has a, a beginning. It is not since eternity. So there now are already examples of how the living of Allah and the living of the creation are two different things in reality. But they are both referred to as hayyun in the Quran. So this refutes their argument to say that if you merely affirm something which is mushtarik, same in name, it automatically means that you are doing tashbih of Allah. But Ahlul Sunnah wal Jama'ah, they affirm, but when they affirm, they know that there is nothing like unto Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So if Allah says He is living, then we understand that we affirm that Allah has that attribute, that He is the ever living. But we do not automatically say it is like the creation. Also, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He mentions another proof as well. هَلْ أَتَى عَلَى الْإِنسَانِ حِينُ مِنَ الدَّحْرِ لَمْ يَكُنْ شَيْءًا مَذْكُرًا That has there not been over man a period of time when he was nothing to be mentioned, once again showing that mankind is preceded before something. There is a beginning for his living. And as for Allah, there is no beginning. So I hope up until this part now, you've, you've understood the ishqal, the, those the Asha'ira, and other than them, how they fall into error with the principle which they work with. And then we've mentioned the principle, and also we've refuted their principle, as Sheikh Ahmed Najmi has mentioned. Is that clear so far? Okay. <clears throat> so regarding Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's living, then that is not connected to anyone or anything that Allah needs. As for the creation, then it is in need that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala brings Fallahu awjad al khalq. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala brings the creation into existence. And it is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that protects the existence of mankind how he wills. Fatabayna min huna anna al isam al hay. So it is now uh, clear that the isam hay or al hay. The name al hay that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has referred to himself in the statement where he mentions Allahu la ilaha illa al hayyu al qayyum. That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala refers to himself in this verse as the ever living. As the ever living. Also in another verse, this is also to show you, these are proofs uh, to show you uh, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is everlasting. وتوقل وَتَوَكَّلْ عَلَى الْحَيِّ الَّذِي لَا يَمُوتِ And that is uh, Surah Al-Furqan, verse 58. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he says, and put your trust in the ever-living. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has referred to himself as the ever-living. Another example that we're going to give you now, a verse. The following verse is, is how, in the, the first two examples, Allah is referred to as al hay the, the verses where we mentioned that Allah is everlasting. Allahu la ilaha illahul hayyul qayyum. And tawakkaltu ala al-hayy alladhi la yamut. In these verses, al hay is referring to Allah. Now, the following verses. Look, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions, يُخْرِجُ الْحَيَّ مِنَ الْمَيِّتِ وَيُخْرِجُ الْمَيِّتَ مِنَ الْحَيِّ Surah Al-Rum, verse 19. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he says, he brings out the living from the dead. But it's written in the same way, al hay But the al hay here is referred to the creation. So Allah has now called the creation and referred to the creation al hay But in the other verses, he mentioned al hay referring to himself. So look, al hay there's an ishtiraq al-ism. That the two names come together. Allah has used that to explain and describe himself. And he also hear that Allah brings out the dead. Or from bringing, uh, he brings out the living from the dead. And brings out the dead from the living. But here he's talking about the creation. But use the wording al hay But Ahlul Sunnah wal Jama'ah. They understand from the different nusus and the principles. That there's nothing like unto Allah. So we understand automatically that when Allah speaks about the creation and the life of the creation, then that pertains 
to mayulik al makhlukin what is befitting for the creation and when allah mentions al hay referring to himself then that is mayulik bi jalal and that is what is befitting to allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so in conclusion of all of this the argument that the ashaira bring the fact that a name is used for both allah and the creation and now they have to negate and they say that we cannot use that for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and then they fall into making interpretation and ta'wil, that action and that theory is batil, is false. Is that understood? Okay. So the next thing that we covered, oh sorry, he elaborated a bit more and he also said, Sheikh, he said, فَمَنْ زَعْمَ أَنَّ مَنْ أَثْبَتَ شَيْرٍ مِنَ الصِّفَاتِ فَقَدْ شَبَّ اللَّهِ بِخَلْقِهِ As for the one who claims that if you affirm, if you affirm something from the attributes of Allah, then that necessitates that that is making likeness or, or, making, or striking a similitude to the creation. Or, uh, then he said, then that is batil, that is false. Or the one that claims that Ahlul Sunnah wal Jama'ah, they are the Mushabbiha, they are the ones that liken the Allah's attributes to the attributes of the creation, then once again their claim is false. That claim is false. Why? Because Ahlul Sunnah wal Jama'ah, they affirm for Allah what Allah has affirmed for Himself in a manner which is befitting for Allah, as we have mentioned in the verse. So when Allah mentions Al Hay, and we look at the tafsir of the Sahaba, we look at what Ahl al-Ilm have said, and the living of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, there is no beginning and there is no ending. We mentioned yesterday also regarding Allah al-Azali wal-Abadi. Uh, Ahl al-Ilm, they have mentioned that Amna Allah Azza wa Jal al-Azali, with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when he's mentioned regarding him al-Azali, then that is, لَيْسَ لُهُ الْبِدَايَةِ There is no beginning. And when it is mentioned and attributed to Allah as abadi, then that means laysa luhun nihaya. That's not in the book. That's, that's a ziyad, alhamdulillah. That was from the fawaid of our brother Abu Hakim, hafadullah ta'ala. So, Ahlul Ilm, they say, when it becomes azali, whenever you hear that thing, that um, description al-azali referring to Allah, it means in the Arabic language laysa hul bidaya. It does not have a beginning. And whenever you hear abadi connected with Allah, then it refers that there is no nihaya, that there is no ending. Clear? So once again, Ahlul Sunnah wal Jama'a affirm for Allah His attributes in a manner which is befitting to Allah. And and they do not... Uh, they do not let their imagination uh, or, or their thoughts take control and try to uh, interpret Allah's attributes with what they understand. So Qaida, Sheikh uh, Ahmed, he mentions principle, Qaida. فَدَلَّ هَذَا عَلَى وُجُوبَ النَّفِي وَالْإِثْبَاتِ فِي عَقِيدَةِ الْمُكَلِّفِينَ so all of this, what we have mentioned, a principle that we gather from this, that it is an obligation to affirm and negate when it comes to aqidah. What do they negate? They negate any imperfections and any deficiencies in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's attributes. And they also recognize that resembling Allah's attributes to the creation's attributes, then this is making out that Allah is deficient. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is above and free of that. Is that clear? Then we moved on, we finished there, and then we took regarding um, 
Sheikh Saleh Fawzan, Hafiz Allah Ta'ala, explanation regarding Ilhad. Because the next thing was that we mentioned, the actual text, the explanation of the text, وَلَا يُلْحِدُونَ فِي أَسْمَاءِ إِلَّا وَآيَاتِهِ That uh, they do not do Ilhad regarding Allah's names and attributes. So now we will take that wording, Yulhidun is taken from the word of, uh, word of Ilhad. So now we will explain what that is with the wording of Shaykh Fawzan. Regarding وَلَا يُلْحِدُونَ فِي أَسْمَاءِ إِلَّا وَآيَاتِهِ Al-Ilhad linguistically means to lean. Linguistically, it means to lean. Al-Udulu Anishay. To deviate away from something. To lean away or to deviate from something. That is the linguistic meaning. When it pertains to Ilhad in Allah's names and His verses, is that a person deviates away from the correct intent of Allah's names and attributes and signs. So the correct intent that is present, a person leans and deviates away from that and falls into either ta'teel or other tahrif and the likes. So linguistically, it is to distort and to move away from the correct meaning. And Ilhad, Sheikh Fawzan, he mentions, in, is in five different categories. Five different categories. So, does, is Ilhad understood? That you, Ilhad, the word Ilhad. طيب? And the one that does that action of Ilhad is referred to as Mulhid. So these are terminologies that you should all know, alhamdulillah. Al-Mulhid. So number one, the first category. And to sum al-asnam biha. Is to give titles to idols that derive from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's names. So that's the first. The first one is to give titles and names to idols. But these names that are given to these idols are derived from Allah's names. And I'll give you some examples. Like to say Allat, which is a name of an idol, which they used to worship. Allat is derived from Al-Ilah. The one that should be worshipped. Al-Ilah. Al-Uzza. Likewise. A name given to a false god. Which they were worshipping. And that was taken from Al-Aziz. And Al-Aziz is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Wa Manat. Likewise. Name of an idol. Taken from Al-Mannan. So that is the first type of Ilhad. In regarding giving these idols names. That have been derived from the names of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Number two, and this is page 24 for those who have the explanation of Sheikh Saleh Fawzan. Number two, Tasmiyatuh subhanahu wa ta'ala bima la yuliq bihi is to give Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala a title or to give Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala a name that is not befitting for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Like the example of the Christians. They refer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and give him the title as father. Number three. Is to mention some type of naqs, deficiency in regards to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So giving descriptions to Allah and these descriptions in it has the meaning of deficiency. Like the example of the Jews. Where Allah mentions in the Quran that they say, Inna Allah faqiru wa nahnu aghniya. That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is referred to as faqir and we are the aghniya. 
and also the state of Yadullahi Maglula, that the hand of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is tied up. So, or the statement that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is tarahiyom sabt, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala rested on the day, uh, 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 on Saturday, yom sabt, that Allah rests or takes a break. So these are all um, descriptions to Allah that carry in it naqs, deficiency. Is that understood? Number four. Jahdu ma'aniha wa haqa'iquha is to deny the correct meaning and its correct reality regarding Allah's names and attributes, is to deny them. The, its, its true meaning and its reality. Like the example of the Jahmiyyah. The Jahmiyyah, when it comes to Allah's names and attributes, they deny it. And they say, إِنَّ أَلْفَاظَهَا مُجَرَّدَةٌ لَا تَتَضَمَّنْ صِفَاتٍ وَلَا مَعَانِي They say that regarding Allah's names, for example, that they are mere titles. They are just mere titles, nothing more. It does not comprise of any attributes or does not have any meaning. So, Sheikh, gives an example. He says, for Samir, like for example, a Samir, la yadullu ala sami'in. So the title, as Samir, Ahlul Sunnah wal Jama'ah, they affirm that, and from that, they attribute the, uh, the attribute of Samir. For them, they say that this does not indicate that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala can hear. They negate the attribute. So for them, it's just a title, nothing more. Nothing comes, nothing comes from that. Al-Basr, that um, Allah al-Basir, it does not have the attribute of Basr. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the all-seeing. For them, it's just a title. And it does not comprise of any attribute. Walhay, la yiddillu ala hayat. And alhay, it does not comprise living, the attribute of living. And that's the exa- uh, and, and, and the likes of that. So that is number four. Number five. تشبيحه تشبيحه صفاته بصفات خلقه كقول ممثل يده قيدي. The fifth one is to resemble the attributes of Allah Subhanahu wa Taala with the attributes of the creation, like the um, statement of the ممثلة when they say, uh, or, or F1, the example like يده قيدي is to say that Allah's hands is like my hand, and other than that. So these are the five different types of ilhad that Shaykh al-Fawzan Ta'ala, has mentioned. So five ways how they deviate from the correct meaning. Shaykh uh, Fawzan, he finished off by quoting and saying that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he mentions in the Quran that to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the most beautiful names. So call to and beseech Allah by them and leave alone who take up the action or, or take up the act of doing ilhad in one of the things that we have mentioned. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that they will receive the recompense, meaning that they will be punished for what they do. Ma kanu ya'malun, for what they used to do. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has referred to that as a sin and as a crime of what they are doing. And Shaykh Fawzan, he says, and indeed those, and very Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has warned the mulhideen, those who fall into this, into this action, with a very severe warning. So alhamdulillah, that was regarding al-ilhad. Is that clear? That was basically what we did for yesterday's lesson. The new title today, Okay, before we move on to Sheikh Ahmed al Najmi's, there is something that I want to bring some kalam from Sheikh Uthayyameen. Kafi yutimul iman bi asma'illah azza wa jal. That's the title. Also, I was mentioning to one of the brothers today 
what I am looking for, inshallah, bi idhnillah, is something similar to what we used to do in Medina. When we were studying in Medina, there would always be one or two brothers that had amazing notes. And they would write everything down and they would not miss anything. Handwriting was neat. Titles, everything, alhamdulillah, was really in nice in order. And then at the end of the semester, then the one that used to have the best mudhakira and the notes was given into the printing place and it was made into a mudhakira, meaning like a small booklet. And that was used, alhamdulillah, for all of the students to do muraja'ah, to do revision for the exams. So alhamdulillah, I would like the same. So alhamdulillah, if you can alhamdulillah have your notes, which is munadham. I even said to one brother that perhaps you can compare with somebody else. Maybe there's two or three of you. So alhamdulillah, at the end of the lessons, not only have we studied, not only will there be the audios, we will always have a mudhakira, which is nice and easy. And a mudhakira is different from studying the book. Because it, when you study the book, you go into detail. You take every single last detail. Well, mudhakira is mainly bullet points and it is amazing for revision. So when you have a mudhakira which is, um, alhamdulillah, has ikhtisar, abbreviated, alhamdulillah, with all the notes and bullet points, it makes it very, very easy to go over your notes, alhamdulillah. And maybe that will be used for you to teach your wife or to teach your husband or to teach your children or your family. You can help that as well. So alhamdulillah, Try to have all of the notes. And alhamdulillah, a few of you, inshallah, compare your notes and have one, mashallah, mudhakira, which is kamil, bi'ithnillah. Complete. So the title now, كيف يتم الإيمان بأسماء الله عز وجل. The title is, how is iman in Allah's names complete or completed? Or how is the faith in Allah's names completed? كيف يتم الإيمان بأسماء الله. Now, all I want you to do now is even don't even write. Just listen to what I'm going to say first, and when I repeat it, you can write. Because I don't want you to get confusing. Because there are some terminologies which are used here that may become confusing, but in actuality, it's very easy. So, before I even explain, let me just explain two terminologies. Before we go into what the shaykhi says. The first terminology that I want to mention is something which is referred to as muta'addi. Muta'addi. Transitive description. Just memorize that now or just understand that we will get into it and I'll explain. So muta'addi is transitive. It's a description which is transitive. And I'll, don't be worrying about if it sounds funny. Or difficult, we'll explain. And then the other one is lazim, which is non-transitive. Lazim, non-transitive. It's important that you know transitive and non-transitive and what they are in Arabic. Muta'addi and lazim. So muta'addi is... You see, here we go. Uh, Muta'addi is... Transitive. Taib. Lazim. Non-transitive. Just memorize that for now. And now I'll explain to you what Sheikh Othay mean. Alhamdulillah, he explains. So is that understood so far? Okay. Transitive. I've brought that down a little description. so you can. Transitive is a description that includes a direct external Effect. So just remember, transitive, muta'addi, it is a description that includes a direct external effect, an outside effect on something. Taib. And the opposite, non transitive, does not include a direct extend, extended effect. So the opposite. So they are, they're, they're opposites. So, transitive, it is a description that has an external effect. A non-transitive is the opposite. It doesn't have an external effect. That's the linguistic side of things. So now let's tackle what Sheikh Uthiyyimin, he says. 
So regarding Allah's names, if Allah's names is transitive, which is referred to what in Arabic? Taib muta'addi. So a, how a person can complete the iman if Allah's name is transitive, and we will explain how Allah, how will you know if it's transitive or not? Then the following three things happen. So if it is established that Allah's name is a transitive description, then three things happen. And these three things is having complete iman in Allah's names. So the title is, and I hope I want to make it as clear as possible. The, the title is what? How to, how to complete iman in regarding Allah's names. So that's the title. So now we're going to mention how to do that. But I only started off with giving you these descriptions so you don't get confused afterwards. So you know muta'addi, it means an external effect. Taib. A non-transitive, it doesn't have an external effect. So how does that fit in now? So if the name is muta'addi, the description is muta'addi, then you do three things. Number one, Ithbat al-ism. Number one, you affirm that name. And we will use one example for all three of them. So the example that we're going to use is Ar-Rahim. So Ar-Rahim. We're going to use that as an example. That's your example that we're going to work with. Ar-Rahim, it is a um, transitive uh, it is a transitive description because of the following. Because three things derive from it. And when these three things derive from it, it becomes transitive. So number one, Ithbat al-Ism. You affirm the name. Ar-Rahim, that is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So that's the first part. Okay. What have you got, what have you got so far? Do you understand what muta'addi is? Do you understand what lazim is? What's muta'addi? Transitive. And what is lazim? Okay. Now, you, you've told me that. What does transitive mean? An external effect. Ascent. Okay. So now, we're going to give an example of this. So, Ar-Rahim is Allah's name, yes? So, from Allah's name, Ar-Rahim, number one, what do we do? Ithbat al-ism. We affirm that Ar-Rahim is a one of Allah's names. So that's the first thing that we do. That is Allah. Ithbat al-ism. Number two. Ithbat al-sifa alati tadammanuha. We affirm an attribute that comprises in that name. So Allah is Ar-Rahim. So what attribute comes from Ar-Rahim? Ar-Rahma, mercy. Allah is the most merciful. So that's his name. Then Ar-Rahim, what stems from that, what comes from that is an attribute. Allah is referred to as Ar-Rahim because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is a bestower of mercy. So now that's how the attribute comes. Is that understood? Okay. Alhamdulillah, inshallah, we're going to make anything difficult easy. Bi-idhnillah, with the permission of Allah. Now this is the, the tricky part. Well, it's not tricky, alhamdulillah. You've understood the first two clearly, yeah? وَإِثْبَاتُ الْأَثَلَ الَّذِي يَتَرَتَّبْ عَلَيْهِ مِثْلُ الرَّحِيمِ فَتُثْبِتُ الْإِسْمُ هُوَ الرَّحِيمِ وَصِفَهُ هُوَ الرَّحْمَةِ وَالْأَثَرُ هُوَ سُبْحَانُهُ وَتَلَيْهِ يَرْحَمْ بِحَاذَا الرَّحْمَةِ The third one is where the transitive part falls into. Transitive, we said, has an external effect. So Allah is Ar-Rahim. Allah possesses the attribute of Rahmah. But that Rahmah has an external effect on the creation. That Allah forgives the creation. So due to the fact that Allah is forgiving and forgives the creation, what happens when the creation seeks forgiveness and they turn back to Allah, then Allah forgives. So now you have Allah bidhatihi, which is Ar-Rahim. And then we know that he's received that title because he's a possessor of mercy. And then 
that mercy it affects the creation. So now it has an external effect from other than him to his creation. So that is referred to as muta'addi. It has an external effect on something else. And in this case, he has an effect on the creation. So, Ar-Rahim, then this will fall into a transitive name. And when he falls into a transitive description, shall I say, better wording, then three things are applicable. We give the title, we have affirmed the description, and likewise, we affirm that it has an external effect. Is that clear? Mafum? Wa in kanat ism laziman, if it's non transitive, then the following two things happen. The name is affirmed and the attribute. So what kind of name would be lazim? Like like al hay al hay the ever living that al hay we know is allah so we affirm that name and that title for allah why because we know that allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is ever living so due to the fact that allah is ever living never going to perish no ending no beginning so due to that fact then allah is al hay then from that we derive an attribute. And that attribute is that Allah is ever living. And then it stops there. When it's non-transitive, there's only two things that are derived. You establish the name and you establish the attribute. But Allah being al hay does that have an external effect? No. On the creation? That's with Allah. So this is what is referred to as lazim. So, Shaykh Uthayyameen, it just shows you, it's that difficult to explain, it just shows you, Rahimullah Ta'ala, how dikka he was, when he, how precise and how deep faham that he had, how to understand or how to have that complete iman in regarding Allah's names. That if it is muta'addi, an external effect on the creation, then it is done by way of three things. And these three things are? Affirming the name, affirming the attribute, and the external effect. And if it's lazim, the name and the attribute. Is that understood? So alhamdulillah, bi'idhnillah, we can now, inshallah, actualize and make tatbiq of trying to complete our faith in regarding Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's names. نسأل الله إن شاء الله يوفقنا على ذلك. Okay. Oh no. Which one is yours? This is yours. And we finish off now, إن شاء الله. With Sheikh Ahmed Al Najmi. Sheikh Ahmed Al Najmi, رحم الله, regarding the author's statement. The author being who? Shaykh al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah. The statement where he says, لِأَنَّهُ سُبْحَانُهُ لَا سَمِيَّ لَهُ وَلَا قُفَّ لَهُ وَلَا نِدَّ لَهُ Rough translation, and that is because he has no namesake. I mean, he's referring to Allah now. That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has no namesake, meaning has no rival. وَلَا قُفَّ لَهُ and there is none comparable to him. Wala niddala. And none is equal to him. Sheikh Ahmad he says, Hadi thalatha man fiya anillah azza wa jal. These are three things that I've negated regarding Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That there is no name, there is no namesake, there is nothing comparable to Allah, and there's nothing equal to Allah. These three things are negated regarding Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So the first one, where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he says, Anna Allah la that there is no 
namesake or there is no rival to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that is, uh, the proof of that is the statement in Surah Al-Maryam verse 65. هَلْ تَعْلَمُوا لَهُ السَّمِيَّةِ Do you know of any similar or of anything similar to him? Shaykh um, Ahmad al-Najmi explaining this verse, how it's approved. He says, فَهَذَا istifham inkari." That this is istifham, the questioning, but the type of question it is, it is an interrogative question, which means what? It is a question, but in actuality it's not seeking a question, it's interrogative question of denial, which compromises of negation of the affair. So when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying, هَلْ تَعْلَمْ هُسَّمِيَّ Do you know any, anything similar to him? It's not that Allah is asking the question that possibly there is something similar to him. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is rebuking and refuting that thought. Do you know anyone similar to him? I denial of any possibility of that concept. As absolutely, it's rebuking. So in this verse, هَلْ تَعْلَمُ الْسَّمِيَّةَ It comes... In the manner that it is a question, but it is interrogative question, and that means it's a it's a question of denial that compromises comprom- uh, uh, that compromises the meaning of pure negation, meaning that there is nothing like Allah. It is not known and it is not possible that Allah Subhanahu wa Taala has a rival. Huh? Surah Al Maryam, verse sixty-five. Number two now, where it mentions Wala Kuffala, there is none comparable to him. And that is the statement of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, something that we all recite, Alhamdulillah, no, Walam Yakullahu Kufu one ahad. Fanafa al Mukafa Bainuhu Baina Khalkihi. That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in this verse has negated has negated that there is anyone equal or comparable to him. And number three, أَنَّ اللَّهَ لَا نِدَّ له, That there is no equal to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Uh, and nidda here, that there is, uh, there is nothing like Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala or equal to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. لَا نِدَّ فِي ذَاتِهِ There is nothing equal to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in his essence. In, Allah, in Allah's being, in His essence, la fi thatihi. There's nothing comp- um, equal to Allah in His essence. Wa la fi sifatihi. And neither in His attributes. Wa idha kana iman billah, iman bil ghayb. And if there is something that necessitates to have iman in Allah in regarding the affairs of the unseen, فَإِنَّ افْتَرَضَاتِ الْعُقُولِ وَالْقِيَاسَاتِ الْأَذَانِ مَنْفِيَّةِ If it's something to do with the knowledge of the unseen regarding Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that which um, the minds, or, or for example in this case with unseen, then we do not have any assumptions, or we do not have any qiyasat, or uh, uh, comparing, or allowing our intellects, or our intellects to take over and to even think about the ilm al ghayb something which is not informed by Allah, but it's about Allah, something khabar that's mentioned, then we, we do not have assumptions in our mind regarding that. That is disallowed. It is, it is not allowed to have that. Why? Because the minds cannot envision or even picture anything correctly because of the lack of the ability that they have in regarding Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. وَلَا تَقْسِيَةِ الْأَذْنَانِ Why? Because the minds cannot measure such a thing. فَمَنْ عَرَادَ أَنْ يَسْتَعْمَلَ شَيْئًا فِي ذَلِكَ فِي حَقِّ اللَّهِ تَعَالَى فَقَدْ ظَلَّ Whomsoever tries to envision, or whoever tries to have assumptions, or try to measure regarding Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, uh, in, in, to do with his essence or to do with his sifat or to do anything which is connected with the ilm al ghayb with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and they try to do this فَقَدْ ظَلَّ he will fall into misguidance فَلَا سَبِيلِ إِلَى مَعْرِفَةِ اللَّهِ أَوْ لَا سَبِيلِ إِلَى أَسْمَاعِ اللَّهِ وَسِفَاتِ إِلَّا أَنْ تَرِكَةِ كِتَابِ 
kitabihi that there is no way that we can come across any form of knowledge regarding Allah and Allah's essence, Allah's names, Allah's attributes, except by way of the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala or by way of the messenger Muhammad sallallahu wa sallam that was sent. Other than that, it is not possible. فَلَا يُمْكِلْ يَأْحَدِنَنْ يَكُلُنْ شَنْ فِي حَقِّ اللَّهِ And it is not possible that someone can speak about Allah, not his names, not his essence, and not his attributes, except by the way that we have mentioned. وَمَنْ فَعَلَ ذَلِكْ And whoever does this, then they will be misguided. Hence, why, inshallah, when we, when we will take the different individuals like the Ashaira, the Jahmiya, Mu'tazila, all of these individuals, they fall into misguidance due to the fact that they try to do what? Tanzi, but what the Shaykh is mentioning here, they try to explain it away, or they try to talk about the sifat of Allah and the essence of Allah other than the understanding or other than that was mentioned in the Qur'an and the Sunnah, which made them fall into misguidance. And as a khulas of all of this, not just in the bab of asma wa sifat, but in all aspects of our religion, anyone that abandons the guidance of the Qur'an and the Sunnah will immediately fall into misguidance. Due to the fact that the Qur'an and the Sunnah is not crooked, it is a pure way which is munazila min Allah Azza wa Jal, which is from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and it is pure guidance. So if you abandon pure guidance, then after that is what? Dhalal. Ma ba'd al illa dhalal. What is after the uh, haqq and the truth and guidance except for misguidance? And that is all aspects of our life. Whether it is to do with fiqh, whether it is to do with aqidah, uh, mu'amalat, with everything. Alhamdulillah, we use this criteria that is being given to us and we cherish it. And we pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that we are individuals that can uphold and understand what has come to us and then to act upon it. And let that be what guides us and let that be that which governs us and not that we let our intellect or our emotions overpower us and then we fall into things of neglect of the haqq and then we fall into misguidance. وَعَوْذِ بِلَ مِنْ ذَلِكَ And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows best. أَقُولِ قَوْلِ هَذَا اسْتَغْفِرُ لِي وَلَكُمْ فَاسْتَغْفِرُوهُ إِنَّهُ هُوَ الْغَفُورُ الرَّحِيمُ